do you realize that you are what you think? Now, I'm not talking about the power of positive thinking, but I'm saying this, that what you think really shapes who you are. And that's why God tells us to guard our heart, our mind, to keep it with all diligence because out of it, out of the mind, are the issues of life. We're going to talk about it today. You've got to know the importance of knowing God. We become so much like that which we worship, that which we give value to, that which we bow down to. And this is why what you think about God is so critical. Because what God wants you to do, beloved, is he wants you to become more and more like Jesus. He wants to restore in you the image of God. But for that to happen, you've got to worship God properly. And that's what this program is all about. It's all about teaching you the word of God, which gives you absolute truth so that you understand who God is, so that you worship him, as Jesus said, in spirit and in truth. There are many, many people, because they don't study the Word of God, they have a warped view of God, a misunderstanding of God. And the way that you think, the way that I think, affects the way that we live. I told you, and we're looking at Isaiah, but before we go there, I told you about a book that was sent to me or ended up in, in my hands, how it got there, I really don't know. And it's called, Could It Be This Simple? And it's by Timothy R. Jennings, MD, and it's a biblical model for the healing of the mind. Now, I haven't read beyond page uh, 35, but what I have read goes right in line with what I want you to see, with the lesson that God has laid on my heart for us this week. And, and, and what we're looking at is what do you believe about God? What do you think about God? Because what you think about God then in a sense controls your behavior. Well, one of the things that we saw is that what we think, or what I shared with you from this book, what we think, what we believe, what we admire, creates a neural pathway, a neural network in our brain. And what happens is if we are thinking wrong, it's going to lead us absolutely into the wrong direction. Now, I, I want you, because I'm going to show you truths about God. One of the things that he brought out, Jennings brought out in this book, and, and it's something that I have felt for uh, ages, because you look at all the crime in, in the United States of America. You look at the broken relationships. You look at the violence. You look at the anger. You look at how quick people are to, to go off the handle. You look at people, and they're doing all sorts of atrocities, and you think, don't they know that they're going to get punished for this? We hope they're going to get punished for that. But this is what they uh, did. He tells in here about a, uh, a B.S. Centerwell who conducted research that powerfully demonstrates the law of worship or modeling. In other words, what we focus on, what we give weight to, what we bow down to, what, what we model is, is what we become. And uh, he published his results in the Journal of the American Medical Association. So I want you to know this is a valid guy. This is not some guy off the wall that's picked up information from others. And he wanted to see what effect television had on the homicide rate in a country. So he took all the factors and he got them all down and got them very, very clear so that there was no room for error. And this is what he found out. After the introduction of TV, homicide rates in the United States increased 
93 percent from 1945 to 1974 after the introduction of TV. During the same period, homicide rates in increased 92% in Canada. One had gun control, one did not have gun control, but it didn't make any difference. But in South Africa, in which TV did not appear until the 1970s, the homicide rates decreased by 7% from 1945 to 1974. Accordingly, after the introduction of television in 1975, the homicide rate increased 130%. What we focus on, what we admire, what we concentrate on is what we become. Now, God knows this. God knows this. God created us. I mean, all this science that man has, has come up with hasn't surprised God at all. He's laid down the principles. Now we're just finding the stats. It's like when you study the Bible, from our point, our time in history, we can look back because we have historical records to say, oh yes, what God predicted did come to pass. Well, now we come to Isaiah chapter 44. In Isaiah chapter 44, he opens this chapter that says, But now listen, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Now, he wants them to listen. He's like saying, hey, listen up. And he's saying, listen up, because he just told them what he's going to do to them. In Isaiah 43, verse 27, your first forefathers sinned. Your spokesmen have transgressed against me. So I will pollute the princes of the sanctuary. I will consign Jacob to the band and Israel to revilement. Now he's told them, I am going to punish you, but I want you to listen to me because I have good news for you. And that good news for them is that he is not going to forsake them. He says, thus says the Lord, Isaiah 44, 2, who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. Do not fear, O Jacob, my servant, and Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. And then he says, I'm going to put water on the dry ground and I'm going to pour out my spirit on your offspring. In other words, I'm going to have to judge you. I'm going to have to deal with you. But although I have to do that, I want you to know I am not going to forsake you. You are my servant. Now, God's word to you today is know me. Understand me, understand that I'm a righteous God, that I have to judge sin. But if you are mine, you're mine forever. If you are mine, did you get it? You are mine forever. I am not going to forsake you. Now, as we look at Isaiah 40, through 66, the second segment of Isaiah, there's a whole different tone to the book. And there's a whole different tone to the book because in the first 39 chapters, what he has been doing is he has been explaining to them their sin, explaining to them their rebellion, showing them how they have despised him who is the Holy One of Israel because they haven't been living holy lives. Oh, they've been going to the sanctuary. Oh, yes, they've been making their offerings and at the temple and, and they've been going through all the ritual, but their heart is far from them. So in Isaiah chapter 3, and I want you to see this, I want you to understand it. In Isaiah chapter 3, verse 8, this is what he says. For Jerusalem has stumbled. Judah has fallen. In other words, you've gone flat on your face in front of a whole bunch of people, all the other nations, because their speech and their actions are against the Lord to rebel against his glorious presence. Now, what does he mean? Well, over the temple, over Solomon's temple, which was uh, uh, up and, and, and fully operational during the time of Isaiah, over the Holy of Holies was the Shekinah glory, was the presence of the Lord in the cloud, in the fire. 
They lived in the presence of God. And yet what did they do? They turned their back on God. They, uh, their speech and their actions were against God. Now stop and think what I told you. Because as we think, so we are. So the problem with them was their knowledge of God was wrong. They didn't have a true understanding of God. As a matter of fact, he is going to say to them in verse 13 of chapter 5, therefore my people go into exile, into captivity because of a lack of knowledge. Later on, and we're going to study it, it's in the second portion of Isaiah, he's going to say truth has stumbled in the streets. As a matter of fact, Those that walk uprightly make themselves a prey because those that are not walking uprightly hate them because of their righteousness. And we're experiencing that right now in the United States of America. I mean, the world has a case against Christians and and they really hate us. And they hate us if we say what we believe. They hate us if we say what God says. If we say that it's a sin and then they say that we're wrong, that we're phobic on, on whatever, or we are judging people or we are putting ourselves in, in, in a hate crime issue, this is what they're saying. And so he's saying the expression, going back to Isaiah 3, verse 9, the expression on their faces bears witness against them. I mean, you look at people's faces today. You look at them carefully and you can tell a lot about them. They display their sin like Sodom. They do not even conceal it. He says, woe to them. They have brought evil on themselves. Say to the righteous, It will go well with them, for they will eat the fruit of their actions. They were not all corrupt. There were some that were righteous. They were righteous because they were doing what God says is right. But there were others, and he says, woe to them. We'll look at it in just a minute after this important announcement. When Isaiah begins his second segment of the book, he begins with these words, comfort, oh comfort my people. He says, your sins have been paid for in double. And then he tells them what is going to happen to them in the future. Yes, they're going to go into captivity. Yes, God's going to take them to the divine woodshed. But God wants them to understand that they have a future, that they have hope. And he tells us that specifically in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 for Israel. I know the thoughts I have for you. They're thoughts of good and not thoughts of evil to give you a future and to give you a hope. He wants them to understand his thoughts. He wants them to understand his ways. So as we look at Isaiah chapter 3 in verses 9 and 10, what I want you to see is I want you to see that even Isaiah 40 through 66 is talking to these people. Some of them are righteous, but others it says, woe to the wicked. It will go badly with him for what he deserves will be done to him. Why? Because what he has done is he has turned away from the knowledge of God. So what God is going to do, God knows that they're going to go through trials. God knows you're going through trials. God knows that I'm going through trials. They will come sooner or later. If you are a child of God, you are going to experience them. So there are things that you need to understand so that in that trial, you have the proper knowledge of God and the proper knowledge of God keeps you on the right path. And this is what we want to see. So I want us to go back to Isaiah chapter 44. And as we go to Isaiah 44, I want you to see 
what God, the words that God uses because they're so important in, in understanding that he's talking to them in, in their mind. He's, he's giving them brain food, brain food that can nourish them, brain food that can strengthen them, brain food that can keep them from disease and keep them from disastrous ways. That's what he's doing. So in Isaiah chapter 44, after he tells them they're going into captivity. In the first verse, he says, but now listen, O Jacob, my servant. He says, I want you to listen and I want you to remember this. You are my servant. You see, this is the thing that holds me as I go through these trials or when I'm tempted. It's I'm God's servant. And I am on display as God's servant because I am vocal. People know that I belong to God. So the way I live, the way I handle the difficult circumstances of my life either testifies to the grace and the power and the sufficiency of Jesus Christ or it doesn't. So what does your life testify to? So he's saying, I want you to listen, listen up, Jacob, my servant. You come down and he says in verse eight of chapter 44, do not tremble, do not be afraid. Have I not long since announced it to you and declared it? Whatever you go through, when you walk through the waters, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to hold you by my hand. I'm going to take care of you. Now, do you believe that or do you not believe that? If you believe it, it's going to change the way you walk through the waters. <laughs> if you don't, you're going to go through the water screaming and yelling and panicking and popping pills or pocket, popping alcohol or popping drugs or, or, or doing whatever your brain has been trained to do when you're in crisis and you can't handle it. So he's reforming, he's restructuring their thinking about him because they're off in their thinking. In Isaiah 44, verse 8, he says, Have I not since announced it to you and declared it? And you are my witnesses. And listen carefully. Is there any other God besides me? Just tell me, is there any other God? Is there, as I talked about in, in our uh, first day this week, is there a rat God? Is there an elephant God? You know, uh, is there any other God except the one that is in the Old Testament and the New Testament that comprises the Bible? He says, is there any God besides me or is there any other rock, anything that you can build your life and have as a foundation? And he says, I know of none. This is God speaking. So he's reminding him, listen to me. Don't be afraid. Don't tremble. I'm God. I'm the only one. And then you come down to verse 21 and he says, remember these things, O Jacob. He's saying, listen, he's saying, remember why? Because what you think, this is what we've started talking about this week, what you think determines the way you behave. It determines how you handle the circumstances of life. So from there, we come to verse 40, uh, uh, verse 24. And what I want you to see is I want you to see as we look at verse 24 of Isaiah 44. Now I talked about it in our last week, but I talked about it in a hurry. But I want you to see what God is doing, how he is rewiring their thinking so that it will consequently affect how they behave and how they respond. So watch what he says in verse 24. Thus says the Lord, your redeemer and the one who formed you from the womb. He says, I, the Lord, am the maker of all things. I'm going to give you eight, I'm going to give you nine truths this week. Nine truths that I want you to write down. This is number one. Number one is that he is the maker of all things. He is the creator, maker, creator. They're one in the same. All right. So he is the maker, the creator of all things. Now watch what he does. He says, I am the Lord. 
I, the Lord, am the maker of all things, stretching out the heavens by myself. I'm God. I don't need any help. In other words, if I'm your God, you've got a God that can, that is the maker of all things, that can stretch out the heavens by himself and spreading out the earth all alone. In other words, if you've got me, you've got everything that you need because everything that you see on the face of this earth, it's me. I've done it. I formed it. I made it. I fashioned it. I spoke it into existence and I sustain it all. I am the Lord. Now, when you look at this as the Lord, that he is the maker of all things, watch what he shows you in these verses. Watch what he shows you in verse 25. He says, causing the omens, and this is Isaiah 44, verse 25, causing the omens of boasters to fail making fools out of diviners, these, these people that read tarot cards and, and, and read your palm and stuff like that. He says, making fools out of diviners, causing wise men to draw back and turning their knowledge into foolishness. In other words, because I'm the maker, I'm over control. I, I, am, uh, uh, I control the actions and the threats of mankind. So somebody's threatening to curse you. You know, all this teaching about, oh, have you come under a curse and this and that. I think you don't know the whole counsel of God. You don't know. You're, you're taking Deuteronomy, but you're not understanding the whole counsel of God. And the fact that, that, that you are in Christ and, and that nobody is able to curse you and have it have an effect because God is the one that is able to stop that. Do you understand God? Precious one, that's what this is all about. Welcome back, beloved, for the final segment of our program where we really drive it home. Do you remember how we opened this program? We opened it up with asking you the question, do you realize that you are what you think? That's why you and I need to guard our heart. So what I want to tell you today is you need to learn to think Bible, 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 Bible. You need to understand who God is. You need to keep digging out truth for yourself. You need to learn how to discover truth for yourself. That's what this program is all about. But we can take you even deeper than you're going now. I mean, we're going through a book of the Bible and I am so proud of you for studying with me. I am so very proud of you. Some of, I mean, you write me and you tell me that this has become your Bible study time. This has become your family time. This is homeschool time. I mean, all sorts of different times that you're having, getting us on, on radio or getting us on television or getting us on the internet and being able to watch the program again. I'm proud of you for that. I'm proud of you for downloading the study guide. But I want you to take this further. Do you realize how many people there are out there, even Christians? And, 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 and many times it's grievous because they don't know God. They don't have a right understanding of God. All they get is what they get in church. And many, many churches are not teaching the word of God in this way, but rather they're trying to be a seeker friendly church. And so they're trying to do everything they can to keep those lost people entertained instead of training us. And what you and I do need to do is you and I need to mature in the word of God. So go online to preceptsforlife.com or call us at 1-800-763-1990 and find out about other Bible studies that you can take and share with others. Our 40-minute Bible studies, no homework. Anyone can lead them. But through those 40-minute studies, you're spending 40 minutes 
face to face with the word of God. We have a calling on our life and that calling on our life is to help people to know God because the people who know their God will be strong. They will be able to stand firm and they will be able to take action. They won't be immobilized. They will be mobilized and you can help. Join us, won't you? Thank you for watching today. All the programs you see on Precepts for Life are available on CD and DVD. To order your copy of today's program, log on to our website at preceptsforlife.com. To download your free copy of the study guide or to find out more about Precept Ministries International, click on our website or call us today at 1-800-763-1990. Join us for our next program as Kay shares more Precepts for Life.